But as the man who taught me said, it wasn't the apple on the tree, it was the pear on the ground. And that was a pun, and I don't see you all rolling on the floor laughing, so I will continue. So some folks say, why would God do this? Why did he test them like that? What kind of parent walks in, puts a treat in front of their child, something really wonderful, and then says, uh -huh, don't touch it, it'll kill you, and then walks away? So then who would be responsible, the child who ate it, or the parent who chose that way of testing? Who in here would ever take a test in high school or college if you failed it, and instead of getting a low mark, they came in and killed you? We clearly know this is a symbolic story, if only because of the fruit. Because no edible fruit would kill somebody when they ate it. We know that Adam lived for 930 biblical years, and he did not die in the day that he ate the fruit. This we know. So then, why is it that we have all of these things? Our son was in Iraq twice. That's why I have a little gray hair. Uh, and he flew back and forth across what was supposed to be the cradle of civilization. He says he saw people shooting at them. He saw the donkey, he saw the desert. He saw a lot of things, but he never saw that angel out there with that flaming sword guarding the Garden of Eden. Shouldn't it still be out there? And of course, unless you're on Disney, serpents can't talk. So then there must be a symbolic component to this whole idea. And what we find is that each of these things represents some aspect of the ideal world. And in the Garden of Eden, from which man could not live following his mistake, then God had to let them leave. The first sentient people, Adam and Eve, we don't know their names, Fred and Mabel, Bill and Jane, but whoever they were, they were the representatives of all humankind. The fruit we know is a sexual thing, and I can get into this, but I'll leave it alone. The forbidden fruit would be sex outside of marriage. Of course, good and evil would be that state of immaturity where something is not quite ready. We used to steal peaches from our neighbor uh, when, we lived, when we went to the country. If we stole the peaches in June, they would make us sick as dogs. If we waited and went and he would bring us a basket of fruit at the end of August, then the, they were wonderful. So there was something immature about this fruit. To die meant to lose grace and be cut off. The serpent, who I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, was the archangel Lucifer. Nakedness, of course, is a loss of innocence. And the tree of life, oneness with God, being in a state of grace. So let's look at what actually happened in that Garden of Eden, or that ideal place that God wanted human beings to be in. Very simply, God had a formula for the first human beings and all human beings after that, including us, to grow to perfection that place where we are absolutely mature. First of all, we have to establish a foundation of faith. A foundation of faith is what happens when a central figure, in this case, Adam and Eve, completes some task, in their case, just growing up, physically and spiritually, over a period of time, which should have taken about 21 years. So if they could reach that point of maturity, then they would be able to come into God's direct dominion. However, in order to establish the right to be the leaders or the, what would we call them, the, the people that could have dominion over all things, they would have to meet some challenge in their lives. There were things that they had to overcome, maybe minor things, maybe big things. But as central figures, they had to overcome some lesser figure 
by utilizing God's love, by not dominating and crushing and all of that, but just by loving in a real and true way. So when we look at the human fall, what we discover is that feelings got out of control. So Lucifer started feeling alienation. He looked at this little nerd Adam and thought, this guy's a jerk. Why is he being the Lord of creation and I'm just an angel? So there was alienation and feelings of jealousy. Eve was isolated from Adam. She didn't stay out in the light where she should have been. She allowed herself to get swept into a close relationship, which became a sexual relationship as she was seduced by Lucifer. And of course, Adam, who knew what he was supposed to do, allowed himself to disobey and therefore complete this issue of the fall. Big question, I get it every time I lecture. Why didn't God stop the fall? Didn't God know what was going on? Was he out of touch? No, mankind has free will, first of all, and love is a choice. So God can't make us love him. And I'm using the masculine here because it's more convenient. We know that God's nature is masculine and feminine. For God to interfere would be his taking action or taking responsibility for what occurred with the fall. And God couldn't take that responsibility. Why? Because he didn't have any part in the factors that led up to the fall. He didn't push Lucifer. He didn't make Eve do anything. Because of these relationships, Adam and Eve became a blend of good and evil. So Eve's first relationship was just her desire to do something that, she, to get something she felt God was withholding from her. And it was rooted in selfishness. It was as if she was 14 years old and she decided to drive a car through hell. Without training, without any concept, disaster was sure to follow. But she was so excited by that opportunity. Then Eve's second relationship was also outside of God's will. She had, however, this thought that, wow, maybe if I have a relationship with Adam, then I will be able to uh, get back in God's good graces. And so she set out to try to seduce Adam. And most unfortunately, she failed in that. And what about Lucifer, who was God's trusted archangel? Well, Lucifer lost his position and became the origin of evil or the devil or Satan, which means one who hates. Lucifer, the archangel, was among God's most beautiful creatures. And here I show Lucifer is beautiful, not with five eyes and a tail, because we need to understand the nature of the distortion of goodness. Being around God all that time, of course, Lucifer was beautiful. But he thought he was going to lose something. And he therefore violated God's direction and caused their spiritual destruction. By the same token, the things that tempt us away from God are rarely scary things. They're people, beautiful people, who tell us things that are simply not true. Oh, baby, I love you forever. Just give me a little kiss. <laughs> well, maybe not. Hey, you're my best friend. Why don't we try smoking this very strange thing that I found together? And I bet we enjoy it. This is the nature of evil. People we like telling us things that are almost true, but not quite, and that take us in a very scary path if we follow them. So Lucifer became the chief of angels and appointed self-appointed ruler of his own domain. We talked about the four position foundation previously. 
God wanted to be at the center of us. And he wanted to direct Adam and Eve with the same spirit of love. It's two people who become one and have their children and the rest of the universe cared for by him, through them. However, Satan seized dominion. He conquered Eve, who conquered Adam, and their children and the universe suffer the consequence of that conquest. So what kind of world did Satan create? Well, what happened first of all was that sin came into the world. Sin is when you're outside. And it means to be outside. I studied Latin. I might as well put it here. Uh, the sinner stands outside the grace of God. Stands outside of God's ideal. That is why we find people that have deviated from God's ideal so far from the forces of evil that are around them. They find themselves caught and ultimately victimized by them. So there are many kinds of sin. There are the little stupid things we do every day that alienate us from God. There are things we do in a group or collective sin. And that's things like getting involved with gangs, bullying people online, all of this kind of thing. And of course, inherited sin. Things that have happened because our parents made mistakes or our great grandparents made mistakes or something happened and we are still suffering from it. Diseases or uh, things like that are in that category. And finally, there is original sin. Original sin is the most serious sin because it's the sin that is the root that all of the other sins originated from. It is the staining of the blood lineage that happened with the original couple. How do we know it happened from the original couple? Because it has come all through history to the point that even today it reaches its talents into society. And it all stemmed from those first immature sexual relationships. How else do we transmit things to, gener to the next generation except through our blood lineage? So our blood changed. We began conferring something else. Small secret from my own personal history. I went to the doctor, actually, I was quite ill. I went and I had my blood like totally, 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 just totally seen under microscopes and all kinds of things like that. And the doctor came out after a while and she says, I don't know exactly how to tell you this, but your blood's different. This was a long after the blessing. She said, your blood's different. I've never seen blood like this. And she was an expert. And I asked her if it was a problem. She said, no, no, you're probably healthier than a lot of people. <laughs> and so I said, okay, okay, sounds good to me. And I've heard that from more people who have had that kind of thing. There's some change that took place in the blood lineage. Hell was created. So what is hell? God always intended that when we went to the spirit world, we would go to a beautiful place where we could be with him all the time and with people that loved us and cared for us and the great kings and queens who had really gone out of their way to do something special in the world. But what happens when you're separated from God? Then you're feeling shame and anger and confusion and a lot of feelings here on earth. That's why even people that have every external find themselves tortured into mental illness and self-destruction. That state of mind we call hell on earth. And when people die and go into the spirit world, God had to have a place for them where they would feel comfortable. We don't like being around God when we're out of integrity any more than we like being around another person that we know we have caused some problem. So therefore, God had to create a place that could accommodate people that were in ignorance and confusion, and that place we call hell. The sexual union became degraded. So what is sex? 
Sex is the thing that should bring us into the strongest relationship with God because it is our creative place. We can create new life like God does. Therefore, it is the holiest and highest experience that man and woman can have on earth. But instead, what has happened? People abandon each other. They are uh, unfaithful to each other. They are dominating over each other. And it's become the source of jokes and cheap thrills, power struggles and all kinds of horrible things, even criminality and murder. Sometimes we're even confused. Who should be our sexual partner? Someone who is way too young, someone who is of the same sex. These things become confusing to us. We don't understand them. And that's the degradation of the sexual union. In fact, we can look at people throughout history and even in our recent history who have suffered from a misunderstanding of the right use of the sexual experience. At least four of the people on this picture were people who either were or were destined to become presidents. But because of some horrible, terrible thing that they did, suddenly found themselves disgraced. Famous athlete, uh, brilliant singer, marvelous movie maker, Great people and nations have fallen because of the misunderstanding of sex. Even when people get married, it's a punchline. So there was one famous uh, comedian. A lot of you will know him, especially older people. Take my wife, please, Rodney Dangerfield. He made a whole career out of complaining about all the terrible things his wife did. A career. How could he have that much material? <laughs> but we see people married to the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Hey, she's got money, so I want to marry her. Hey, he's got prestige, so I want to marry him. Uh, he's a gangsta. I like him because uh, I like bad boys. Uh, she's uh, really experienced sexually, so I want to have that kind of woman instead of some little stupid person. So what should be a divine calling? To unite with another human being for eternity and mirror God's image is something we make fun of. I've heard men say, why should I pay for the cow when I can get the milk for free? In short, why even bother with marriage? I can find any woman to have sex with, and then it's just like being married. People have become preoccupied with sexuality. So here we find people saying, hey, let's have a trial run. Why don't we see how we like each other? And if we don't like each other, eh, then we'll just leave. It doesn't work that hard because hearts get, or that easily because hearts get involved. As well, looking at pornography and where it is in our society. Virgins have been devaluated and the concept of sexual purity before marriage is laughable to many people in the outside world. How many sexual crimes have there been uh, over time? And we're seeing them rise again and again. And of course, the oldest profession is sex for hire. We've lost our value of human life. So over here on the left, these are young men who thought that, hey, let's just go out and shoot it up with guys. And here are their tragic families coming to identify their bodies. They are dead. I worked with a young man once who told me, yeah, I'm in the street life. I know I won't live to be 18. Well, he lived to be 18, but he did not live to be 21. So he never grew up, he never knew what his life was all about. And over here, this sweet little baby, he's Beautiful boy, perfectly made, but he's dead. And I don't think you can see the torture marks on his body, but someone tortured this little boy to death over a long period of time. You have some new scars and some healed scars, but 
finally, his little life was too great for him to bear and God took him home. We lost our ability to be compassionate. Don't misunderstand this picture. This is a little girl, she's about four years old. And a photographer saw her while he was in Darfur in Africa. And he took this picture of the vulture just waiting for her to take her last breath so that he can attack. Well, this man picked up the little girl after he took this picture and he shooed the vultures away, because there's more than one. And he took her to a place where she could be healed and taken care of. The little girl lived. But when this man went home and began to show these pictures to his friends, hoping that they would give support to this particular medical mission, his friends became angry. He tried putting it on some of the local TV stations. They were enraged at him. How dare you bring this ugliness into our world? To the point that realizing how much there was that was not understood by other human beings, the suffering of others, this man killed himself. We became haters. This is not Halloween. Why are these children dressed up in these outfits that represent hatred? What are they learning about other people? How narrow are their worlds becoming because they cannot appreciate all people? And God's great have dominion gift that he gave us, this beautiful world. How are we taking care of it? Now we're talking about global warming. Now that it's almost too late, we're thinking, oh, gee, we could lose our polar bears. And our earth is just falling apart. So we've forgotten our places as the protectors of creation. And because we don't understand that, we are becoming insane. There is a clip I would show, but we don't have the time for it. Uh, now we've become the masters of death and destruction. We see the little girl here. Her clothes were literally burned off her body by napalm during uh, Vietnam, the Vietnamese War. And the soldiers are taking them to safety. But I don't know if anyone looks at this little boy here, whose face, the little boy on the extreme left, whose face is just, who can comfort this child? Where's mom? Where's dad? Why have they been taken away from me? I don't know. So Adam and Eve lost even the elementary emotional development. And again, uh, that's something that we can understand after we see all of this. We became debtors to each other, to God and to Satan. And until we pay off all of those debts, we cannot just walk away. So there are a lot of fallen natures that came out of this fall. We don't see God's viewpoint. We've left our proper positions as human beings, just as Eve was, just as Lucifer was not the uh, teacher, but became the lover. And Eve was not the daughter, but left her bridal position. They reversed the order of dominion as we've seen. They multiplied evil and made the deviation far worse. And in his latter years, True Father talked about a fifth fallen nature, that attempt to shift the blame. Well, Eve tempted me and so I ate of the fruit. Adam beguiled, Adam, or the saint, I'm sorry, the serpent beguiled me and so I ate of the fruit. Put the blame on someone else and this is what we did. Left to our own devices, we will self-destruct. So when God looks at the world in which he invested so much, his ideal for who we are as individuals versus what we became, God's ideal for a true couple versus how we live as husband and wife, 
the wonderful family versus the trials that the family has gone through and the protectors of God's world. God's vision, you can't feel anything but the most profound sorrow and pity than what does God himself feel. So in the Greek myth of creation, Pandora's disobedience released pandemonium, all the devils, onto the earth and left only one small creature. That small creature was home. And because of the deviation from God's will, we needed a guide to bring us back. And therefore, God set out to find the one that could bring about the restoration of the ideal. So I want to thank you all for your attention and God bless you. And I hope you have enjoyed that presentation and learned a little something from it. Thank you. Ooh. Sandra, do you hear that? Uh, yes. We Thank loved you. it so much. Thank you again. We're going to give you another big hand. <laughs> we are really grateful that you took time to give us this very wonderful, powerful presentation. Thank you so much, Sandra. Uh, we can't tell you how we're, we're just very right enlightened here amazing so look uh, we're going to move on as I said 1.30 we'll have lunch and before I move on I want to ask two people who just came in to introduce themselves where they were born and what their name is where they were born and what's the favorite part of creation start with those two right there Thank you. So good to have you. Okay. So look, we, we're going to move on. And the next presenter is someone, I, actually I've known this person a long time. Pretty amazing person, you know. So let's welcome up Neville. Thank you. Thank you there. So uh, I want to do something a little different just to lighten up our, our place. I'm going to sing you a song, okay? <clears throat> 